Hi, I'm Dr. Joe Falbo, and I want to spend just a few moments with you today talking about amblyopia, or lazy eye. There are two main reasons that a student gets amblyopia. The first one is a little easier to understand. We call it strabismic amblyopia. Quite simply, that just means that if my hands represent the student's eyes, one of the eyes turns in as a crossed eye or turns out as a wandering eye. Now, if this occurs where an eye turns in or turns out, what happens for the student is as they look at you, the left eye is on target and sees your face and takes that image back to the brain. But the right eye has turned in and is not pointed at your face. So it takes an image from something over there back to the brain. Now the brain knows right away that of these two images, it can't take two unlike images and put them together. So the brain will take the image of your face and use it, but the image from the right eye from over there that doesn't match, and it'll turn that image off. Now, strabismic amblyopia, any amblyopia for that reason, starts usually at the age of one or two. By the time most of us eye doctors see these students at the age of three, four, five, or six years or later, the amblyopia is pretty embedded. So we have an eye that crosses, an image that the brain doesn't want, so it turns off the image from the right eye, and as the student develops, as the student ages and matures, the left eye is used quite a bit, and the right eye is not used very much at all. Similar to a young student that breaks his arm and has it in a cast, and then six weeks later has the cast removed, when the cast is removed, what do we see? The muscles are atrophied. They're much weaker. They're thinner than in the opposite arm. The same thing occurs with the eyes. The left eye has been used for a year or two or three, much more than the right. Now the right eye internally is much weaker. So what do we need to do? We need to help align that eye properly, and then we have, have to stimulate the inside of that eye to develop now and catch up to the left. How do we do that? There are a number of techniques. We use over 50 different techniques in my office. Vision therapy, or eye exercises, to stimulate that eye, much like you would physical therapy with the broken arm that's healing. Sometimes we can use patching, but not just patching alone. We can use patching in combination with the therapy procedures. Sometimes we can use eye drops. Eye drops like atropine or homatropine is an eye drop that placed in the better eye, the left eye, will cause the pupil to dilate, cause a little bit of blur, and force the brain to use the weaker eye and stimulate it. Again, whether we use patching of the good eye to make the weak eye work, or if we use eye drops over here to blur that eye and make the good eye work. It has to be used in conjunction with vision therapy to really get the full results. Now I told you there were two types of amblyopia. Number two, the second type of amblyopia is refractive amblyopia. Quite simply, that just means of the two eyes, one eye has a much higher eyeglass prescription need than the other. So what happens is, in this very young child, before they get eyeglasses or contacts, they are developing with a blurry image from the right eye and a clear image from the left, and the brain just chooses to use the good image from the left and again, turn off the right. What's the course of action in this type of amblyopia, refractive amblyopia? Well, we need to correct the vision first, so eyeglasses or contact lenses out front to make the image good, but remember, that right eye has been blurry for a number of years and not used. So the brain has turned it off, it has atrophied inside, so after getting a good correction with glasses or contact lenses, we need again to use one of the strategies that I just spoke about to stimulate it through vision therapy. I hope this helps you.